Please remember that the complete information for the class that you are about to view is at elithecomputerguy.com. Not only do we have our videos there, but we have part lists, diagrams, pictures, and even complete code examples. So if you are watching this video and you want more information, please go to elithecomputerguy.com. Welcome back. As you know, I am Eli the Computer Guy, and in today's class, we are going to be creating a web gallery application using a MySQL database as the back end. Uh, so up until now, we have not been using any databases as a back end for our gallery, gallery applications. Basically, all we've been doing is we have been dumping uh, picture files into a folder, and then we use a PHP function in order to read what files are in the folder, and then using an array and a for each function to then go through and actually just simply print those images out onto an HTML document. So we created a photo stream app before, we created a gallery app where you have a bunch of thumbnails and you can click on those individual thumbnails and I showed you how to upload uh, image files into the folder using an HTML form. Well, one of the issues you run into with that kind of gallery application is that you can't add any additional information, really. Now, don't get me wrong, if you're a real expert, you, know, you understand how to use metadata, but again, especially for the new people, uh, one of the issues that you run into uh, when all you're doing is uploading images into a folder and then printing out those images into the HTML document is that you don't have a lot of data to work with. You have the image name, you have the image size. Again, maybe if there is metadata in the image file itself, you might be able to pull that out, uh, but you can't do a lot of sophisticated things because there's no real place uh, to store the data. So one of the important things to realize whenever you're creating an application is that you need to build the individual components that will provide the resources for whatever services you want to offer in your application. So if all you're going to be doing, if literally all you're going to be doing is printing out images onto an HTML document, then all you have to do is dump the images into a folder, uh, use a PHP function in order to read uh, what files are in the folder, and then again, just simply print those out using the IMG SRC tag. But what if you want to do more sophisticated things? What if you want to be able to do things like tag your images and then be able to search based off of tagged images? Uh, what if you want to add more complicated descriptions? Again, what if you want to do some kind of Instagram type thing uh, where you have a picture and then you have a description or basically you have some type of writing under the picture? Again, tags, uh, you want to have user accounts, all of that type of stuff. Well, one of the things with that is all of that data actually has to be saved somewhere, right? And that's not going to be saved in the image file itself. So this is where you add a database in order to save that information. So in the uh, demonstration that we're going to be doing today, basically what's going to happen is when we upload an image into the folder, uh, what is then going to happen is we are then going to add the link to that image to a table in a MySQL database. And then within that table, there will be a m number of different fields. So you'll have, uh, basically you will have the field for the location of where that image is, then you can have a field for the description of that image. Then you can also have a field uh, for the tags of that image. And then you can have a field for when the time, you know, when that image was uploaded. And basically you can add all of these fields in relation to that image. So in the future, then we can do things such as be able to search based off of tags or descriptions, uh, or we'll be able to do more complicated uh, things, basically being able to interact with the images because now we will have information about the images stored within the database. And then once it's stored within the database, again, you can do SQL, uh, you can do queries, you can do searches, you can do updates, you can do a lot of other fancy complicated things. So basically the class, what I'm going to be showing you how to do today is when we upload an image uh, into our gallery app, that image is going to be saved into the file like we created before. But when we save it into the, to the folder that, that we created before, what's also going to happen is we're actually going to insert into our table in the MySQL database the location of that image, the description of the image, tags for the image, and also a timestamp for the image. And then what's going to happen is when we print out our gallery now, instead of having a function simply read what files are in a particular folder and then simply print out the results, what's going to happen this time is we're now going to read from the database and then using the information in the database, we're going to print out the gallery that way. So 
that is basically what we're going to be doing today. Let me go over. I'm going to show you an example of, of what we're actually going to be producing. And then we're going to go to the whiteboard again, just to reinforce what we're going to be doing today. And then we'll go and we'll actually take a look at the code. So with that, let's go over to the computer and give you a demonstration of what we're going to be doing. So here we are at my demonstration computer, and this is the demonstration that we're going to be going over today. Again, for the demonstration computer, all I need is a web browser, that's it. I'm using a MacBook Pro, but you can use any computer you want as a demonstration. Essentially, what this is doing, and this is communicating with the Linux server I have over at 10.0.1.28. Uh, it is then opening this fi file called gallerydb.php, and that is how we are getting this website. So basically, again, with the demonstration, you can be using a, a Chromebook or whatever you want. All you need for this is basically just a web browser to access the LAMP server, the Linux Apache MySQL and PHP server that you have created. Uh, and so this is the gallery uh, so far. Now with this, I have not done any fancy CSS or anything like that. I feel, again, when we start going into dealing with things like databases, uh, subjects that might be a little bit more complicated, I do not want you to get confused. The more information I give you at one time, the more likely it is you're going to focus on the wrong thing. <laughs> so with this, it is ugly because there is no CSS here. I'm just trying to show you how you're able to add things to the database and then how you're able to read from the database to print out an HTML document. So here I have two images within this gallery that I've created so far. Uh, so this right here, uh, this number, so you see uh, 14 here and you see 15 here. Basically, these are pick IDs. Uh, but again, whenever you're dealing with a MySQL database, you are going to need some kind of unique identifier for every single record within the table uh, for that database. Uh, and so that's why you always, you do an auto increment and then you come up with some kind of ID system. And so with this, it's just an auto increment uh, ID. Um, I had previous pictures in the past and I deleted those. Um, so at this point, that's why this says 14 because I actually, I had 13 other pictures in the database. I deleted all of those records and this just keeps counting up from where it stops counting so that's why it's 14 and 15 here uh, past that what I have here is basically the name uh, of the image file and its location so when we are going to be uh, seeing whether or not the image file has embedded properly again as a troubleshooting procedure I'm just I'm looking here and seeing what that image file name is supposed to be to see if I fat fingered something is it actually pointing to the right image file then past that I have a description so again this is my little my little chihuahua peanut uh, so my girl and then past that I have my tag so again this will be interesting in future projects where we'll then be able to search images based off of tags uh, then we come down here to the next uh, the next image that I have again we have the image ID here, uh, again, just for troubleshooting purposes or whatever else. This is also, again, the, the file name and the file path to what we're supposed to be embedding, again, to make sure I didn't fat finger or do something stupid. Uh, then we have a, a description here, again, a nice pick, and then our tags, angry puppy dog, right? So basically, if I did a search in the future, once we create a little search app, I could search for tags that have dog uh, for the image, and then that would show me all of the images with dog as a tag that's the type of thing that you can do now past that uh, then what we can do is we can go up here to upload pictures for database uh, this looks a lot like uh, what we did before with the uh, the picture upload but here we have a picture description and picture tags I can choose a file Oh, let me make sure I choose something different. So uh, let me do uh, 0929 here. Um, I'm actually not sure what 0929 is. So we're just going to do uh, a pick of something. <laughs> and then we're going to do tags. And we'll just put a tag of pick. Um, pick, cool, um, demo, whatever else, right? You can simply just put whatever tags you want there. And then we're going to click on submit. Uh, so here, uh, so this is the image that was uh, submitted. So we're going to have a picture description of a pic of something, a pic of my little girl. Uh, and then we're going to have, you know, picture tags, pic cool demo. Uh, in the in the future, uh, what I'll do is I'll show you how to edit this. So again, since this is in a database, you can then edit whatever records you have in the database. So I'll show you that in the future, again, in another project. Then then down here, um, we have database worked. So this just tells me that the database, it actually went into the database. Nothing stupid happened. Then I have some diagnostic inf information here. Uh, this is the same diagnostic information I had from previous uh, classes showing you about how to actually save a, uh, an uploaded 
a file and an HTML document into an actual folder. So again, all of this here is basically just diagnostic information to verify it's working properly. That can be ripped out once it is working properly. Then again, whenever you create an application, even for yourself, you don't want a dead end. So I can click on the back to gallery. And now we come back to the gallery and now we see this. So again, this is the image ID of 16. This is the image file with the, the file path. This is the description of it. And these are the tags. So this is the demonstration of what we're going to be doing today. So with that, let's go to the whiteboard. Yay, the white, I haven't used the whiteboard in a while. Let's go to the whiteboard again, just to kind of hammer, hammer home what we're doing and then we'll get to the code. Okay, so let me actually draw out what's going on here so that you have a better idea. You can visualize what's happening. Again, one of the big things with whenever you're going to be writing code or really whenever you're going to be building any kind of IT systems is if you can visualize what you're actually creating, it becomes a hell of a lot easier to build what it is that you're trying to create. Uh, a big problem, especially for new people, is they can't really visualize what's going on. So then they build a lot of stuff that just doesn't make any sense, right? So let's talk about how I was creating the picture galleries before, right? So basically before um, I had a folder, right? So I have my server, I have my server and on the folder, I have a folder called pics. So basically I have a pics folder. In that pics folder, one way or another, I added pictures. So we put a whole bunch of JPEG uh, files into this pics folder uh, on my, my web server, right? Then basically all we had in the past is we simply had a PHP script. And what this PHP script did is it used a function to read every single, all the files that were in the PIX folder. And then what it would do is it would put all of those file names into an array. Then we used a function called for each. So basically for each steps through an array. So every record, every value in the array, it steps through. And with that, it then dynamically created an HTML document. And basically using these file names, it created the IMG SRC tags and then printed out the images in the HTML document, right? So when we created an HTML gallery, it created a gallery. When you clicked on an image, that opened up into a, a bigger page, and then you had a big image there. Or again, we did a photo stream, and in the photo stream, all that happened is the images were just in a row on the photo stream. So this is how we created the gallery app before. And again, and again, to be clear, to be clear don't overcode, don't overbuild. If this is all you need, if all you need is simply a place to dump images so that people can access them for whatever reason, this is a great way to do it. Don't, don't overbuild stuff just because you want to be cool, right? So again, this is a great thing. Uh, imagine your organization or your company has a picnic. Um, everybody sends you all the image files, all the JPEG files from the picnic. This is a way you can dump all those image files into a folder and then everybody in the company can simply access access that again in this little html this dynamically written html document and then be able to download the pictures or see the pictures as they see fit again in something like this uh you imagine that all uh, people that are going to be accessing the images they're going to be doing it over the local network the lan so speed probably isn't going to matter so if these are big images or small images it's not going to matter from a resource consumption consumption standpoint you're not going to be really worried about security again if it's just images for your picnic or whatever else you don't really care about security you probably don't really care about care about search or anything else like that so this is a fine way of creating a gallery but but what if you want to do things that are more sophisticated with your images again what if you want to be able to search your images based off of tags or search your images based off of descriptions or or again search images based off of names or be able to say who has access to view which images you know what images are public and what images are private all of that type of stuff what you have to remember in the technology world is you have to create a system that allows you to do that type of stuff. So when you have an image file, right? When you have an image file, basically you have the name, you have the size of the image file, and maybe, maybe if somebody got around it to, to actually adding it, you might have metadata. Oh, remember my writing? 
Have you missed my writing skills? Anyways, so if you have a normal, if, you have a, if, if you're just dumping these images into a folder, you have the name of the image, you have the size of the image, and you have the metadata if anybody bothered to put the metadata in. Right? Uh, that's, that's not really a great way of dealing with things. So a better way of being able to access and interact with the information about these images is if you have a database. So let me erase all this. So imagine, imagine now that basically, oops, let me move that, Ooh, get that light out of the way. Anyways, so now imagine we have the www, we have the same uh, web server, and then in that web server we have a folder called pics, and in that folder we have images. But now what we want to do is we want to give these images more information. We give, we give these images uh, a description. We give these inf images tags. We want to give it an inf uh, information about who uploaded the image, time codes, all of that kind of stuff. Well, now what we can do is basically we can use a PHP script. Uh, and when we upload the images, what can then happen is what we're going to be doing is we're going to be putting information about these images into a database, right? So we have a MySQL uh, database. So the database that we're going to be using today is already built into the LAMP server that I have, right? So we have a database, and in that database, we're going to have a table that is then going to describe these pictures. Uh, so we have the ID. So again, whenever you're going to create these tables, you're going to need an, a unique identifier for every record in the table. So we just have something called a pick ID. So that's going to simply auto increment just to make sure every single record in the table is different somehow. Then what we're going to do is we're going to have the name. So basically we're going to have the pick name. So this is going to be uh, for us. So we like dot forward slash picks forward slash um, dog dot jpeg, right? So this is going to be the name of the picture that we're going to be talking about. Then from there, then we can have the description. So it can be uh, peanut. So the description can be peanut. And then from there, we can have tags. And so the tags can be, you know, dog, cute, you know, angry, whatever else, all the tags that you want to put in there. And then at the end, you can have a timestamp. And so for the timestamp, that's where you can then do things such as sort uh, based off of when, when pictures were uploaded uh, into this folder. Then what can happen is when you're going to be creating the, the, the new dynamic HTML document, so we're still going to use <coughs> PHP. So this time, what PHP is going to do is PHP is going to add these records, information about these pictures into the database. And then we're going to use PHP to pull this information out and then automatically create the HTML document based off of these records. So when I do the image SRC here, what this image SRC is going to point to is it's going to point to the name of that record. When I print out uh, the description, that's going to point to the description of the record. When I put, uh, print out the tags, that's going to do the tags in the record. And today we're not actually really worried too much about the timestamp, right? So whereas before the PHP would just go to the PIX folder and then whatever's in the PIX folder, it would simply dynamically print that the HTML document out. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be using PHP to read from the MySQL database table and based off of the parameters that we give it, it is then going to print out that dynamic HTML document. Why this is going to be important in the future is when we start dealing with things like tags, we can then search. So since we're dealing with a MySQL table, we can do, you know, select uh, all uh, from pics, you know, where tags like uh, whatever, uh, cute, let's say cute. And so what this will do is basically what this SQL statement will do is it'll read through all of these records. And if there are any tags that are cute, it will then print out the entire record that matches that. So then only images where there is a tag that says cute will be printed out. And so this is where it gets to be really cool using a uh, MySQL or any kind of database as a back end for starting to deal with your images. So with that, let's go over to the computer and I can show you how this code works. 
So here we are at my server. So again, I am using Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, and I'm using the graphical user interface, the desktop version. Now, everything that I am showing you today should work fine, basically on any distribution and any version of Linux. Again, I am using a graphical user interface so that I can visualize things, I can show things to you graphically, but everything that I'm showing you today can be used at the basic command line, uh, nothing else. Uh, so past having Ubuntu 18.04 installed, uh, I I use something called task cell so there's an app called task cell that allows you to build uh, servers very easily with that i simply installed the lamp stack so the apache mysql php stack and with that uh, everything is set as default so basically i installed everything uh, and then i did not modify the php.ini file or anything else now i will say with this particular installation uh, when you install the lamp stack uh, php file upload is on so in php INI, there's a setting for whether or not you're able to upload um, files using PHP. And so in this uh, implementation, it was on by default. If you are built, if you've built your own server, you may just have to uh, go into the php.ini file and make sure that you are able to upload files. Uh, so beyond that, again, we have the PIX folder here, the exact same folder we've had in the previous demonstrations. Again, uh, the important thing, remember security for this particular folder. We are going to need to both read and write to this folder. So we're going to need to read to, uh, from this folder so that we can actually take a look at the gallery. And we need to be able to write to this folder uh, just so we can actually save pictures into the folder. So you need the read and and write permission for everybody or for others if you're using the GUI uh, for for the PIX folder that's an important thing uh, past that you will notice uh, with the uh, code today I have actually decided to go over to use Visual Studio Code so previously in my other classes I've simply used a basic ASCII text editor so in the Mac world text edit and the Windows world notepad uh, or in the Linux world G edit is one what I uh, use many times now that our code is actually getting to be a little bit more complicated I've decided to go over to a better code editor just because it makes it a lot easier when I'm actually typing out the code. So everything that I'm showing you today, you can do in a basic ASCII uh, text editor if you want to, uh, but this is Visual Code Studio. Uh, this is free. This is open source from Microsoft if you want to use it. Now past that, again, I have installed a MySQL uh, server uh, onto the server. So we have MySQL running. So if we go to terminal. I just want to show you the table there. Uh, so we can do sudo MySQL, one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, show databases. Um, so basically the databases that we have uh, are the standard ones and then I have the uh, gallery database and so that's the the database that I'm going to be using for today's project. Uh, so then we're going to do use uh, gallery semicolon. So we're, we're now into uh, the gallery database. We do show tables, semicolon, shows us the table. So basically we have the pictures table. Uh, we're going to describe this table, again, D-E-S-C, uh, pictures. So this is going to tell us how this table has been created. And when we take a look at it, basically what we can see here is that we have a pick ID field. It is going to be an integer um, and it's going to be an auto increment. So again, this is going to be our unique ID for this particular table. Then we have a pick underscore name that is simply going to be text. We're going to have a pick underscore description that is going to be text. We're going to have a pick underscore tags that is also going to be text. And then we're going to have a pick underscore added underscore time. And that is going to be a timestamp. So again, this is one of those things to be thinking about whenever you create uh, your application and things like timestamps. Timestamps can be created in numerous different ways. So the timestamp can be created from the PHP script itself. The timestamp uh, can be created from other services, or you can simply have the MySQL database create the timestamp for you. I'm simply here creating the timestamp, uh, you know, in the MySQL database. Uh, then past that, what we can do is we can simply do select all from pictures so what this is going to do is this one is going to show currently show us all the records in the pictures uh, table and when we do this uh, we can see the three images that we've added so we have the pick id again 14 15 and 16. remember these auto increment from the first one that was created so i had 13 other images so when i was building this demonstration i had 13 other images i deleted those other images um, 
in order to, to start the demonstration for today. So that's why these start at 14. Then with the pick name, look at this. This is the full path to the picture. So uh, period forward slash picks forward slash IMG 0900.jpg. Uh, 0871.jpg, so on and so forth. So this is what we are going to be building our IMG SRC tag from. We're simply going to read from this field, dump this value from this field into the HTML document, and then voila, we are now going to have an image embedded onto our HTML document. Then we have a pick description. So my girl, a nice pick, you know, a pick of something, <laughs> because I wasn't sure what it was. And then we have pick tags. So we simply have these tags here. Um, that we will be able to search from in the future and then pick added. So this final thing over here, again, basically this is just a timestamp. Uh, so again, we might use this timestamp for when we're we want to search, uh, you know, what are, what are the, the newest pictures that have shown up or are the oldest pictures that are showing up, basically being able to sort images and that type of thing. So this is the information that's actually sitting in the database. So with that, let's go over and take a look at the code so you can understand how the code works. So we go and we take a look at the code. Basically today, we're going to be dealing with three different files. So we have three files, one folder, and one table in a database. Those, that's everything that we need for, for the little app that we're gonna be creating today. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create the gallerydb.php script. So what this gallerydb.php script does is this actually prints out this gallery. So this gallery that we're taking a look at right now, that is what this code is. So then, so when we take a look at this, uh, the first thing that we have up here is basically just simply a uh, link, a hyperlink to upload pictures. So basically I have created this link to the upload form db.html. And so this is a link for when I wanna upload pictures. If we go over and take a look at the demonstration, this is this. So basically this upload pictures for database here, that is that hyperlink that I'm putting at the top. Again, whenever you're gonna be creating an application, do not create dead ends. Your user should be able to click on something to do the next thing. They should not have to click the back button. If they have to click the back button to use your app, you fail. That's wrong, that's horrible user, ex uh, user experience. So you've gotta give them a way to go to the next thing. So this, again, just a simple little hyperlink up there. Uh, then what we're going to do is we're going to have our PHP script. So you will notice, again, you will notice this hyperlink, this is an HTML hyperlink, is, and this is sitting at the top of the page outside of the PHP tags because it's HTML. If I wrote this inside the PHP tags, there will probably be problems. So that has to be outside. Then what we're going to do is we're going to simply open up the PHP tag. So we're going to say this is a PHP script. Uh, past that, uh, I am then going to create the variables and assign the values to those variables in order to connect to the MySQL server. So dollar sign server name is local host, since the MySQL server is sitting on the local host. Username is pick user. That's a user I created. Uh, password is one, two, three, four, five, six, because, you know, I'm super good about security. I'm the goodest about security. And then finally, dollar sign DB, again, the database that we're going to be connecting to. So in the script itself, we are going to talk about the table. But in the initial connection is where we say what database we're going to be connecting to. Past that, we're going to do dollar sign $connection. So basically what this is, is dollar sign $con is creating a variable uh, for connecting to our MySQL database. Uh, so new uh, MySQL I. Again, I have classes. I have classes about these. So if you don't understand what's going on, go take a look at my MySQL series of classes. Uh, so MySQL I, we're going to pass the value of server name, pass, pass the value of username, pass the value of password, and pass the value of the database. Uh, so this is going to be what's required to actually have this app connect to the, the MySQL database server. Then what we're going to do is we're actually going to try to connect to that database server, um, verify it works. So if connection, connect error. So basically what this is saying here is if there is a connection error, kill the connection, print out connection error, uh, period, and then whatever the connection error is. So since this is all uh, within the, uh, the quotation marks, this will get printed out in text. So if you screwed up the password, if you screwed up the, the, the database, if you screwed up the name or whatever else, it'll print out connection error, and then it will print out on the screen whatever the connection error actually is. Then what we're going to go down do is we're gonna go down here, 
And we're actually going to uh, create the query uh, for the MySQL database server, basically in order to be able to print out the images. We have to go into that, that database table. We have to pull out the records from that table, and this is how we do it. So we're going to create the variable called dollar sign SQL, basically for basically a SQL statement. And then we say what that SQL statement is. So SQL equals, and then what we're going to do is select pick ID, pick name, pick description, pick tags from the pictures table. So up here, we're already in the gallery database. So here we're going to say from the pictures table in the gallery database, I want the pick ID, the pick name, the pick description, and the pick tags. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go down here. We're going to create another variable called result. Result is going to equal basically connection. So this connection up here, we're going to send a query. That's going to be this query, right? So connection is this. So we're going to use this connection to send a query. And the query that we're going to be sending is this query that we created. So if result uh, number rows is greater than zero. So basically when we do this select from pictures, if that is more than nothing, uh, then we're going to go through and print out the gallery. If not, we're simply going to echo zero results, right? So while uh, dollar sign row equals result fetch association. So basically while there's a row, uh, continue. And basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna step through and we're gonna continue to, to fetch. We're gonna fetch from the MySQL database. So what I'm doing here is I'm simply doing uh, creating uh, four variables. So IMG number, IMG SRC, uh, IMG description, and IMG tags. So dollar sign row, row is going to be uh, for the IMG number, I'm going to assign the value of IMG number to the pick ID. Then IMG SRC is going to get the assign the value of pick name. IMG description is going to get the value of the pick description. And IMG tags is going to get the value of the pick tags. So I'm turning these into variables here so I don't have to worry so much about the quotation marks later. Uh, so then we're going to come down here and basically all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be echoing uh, all of these values out um, using HTML. So basically we say echo and then the first thing I'm going to do is echo and then I'm going to do the image number. So whatever the pick ID is, that's going to get printed out here. We are going, going to concatenate. So we're going to do period, um, double quotation, space, hyphen, hyphen, space, double quotation. And then we're going to concatenate on the ING SRC. So you'll notice this isn't an image tag. I'm not actually embedding the image yet. I am simply printing out what the value of that is. Then we do the, the space hyphen hyphen, then the, the image description, space hyphen hyphen, image tags. So when we're looking at this echo right here, what we're going to be doing when we take a look at the description is this is going to be here, right? So this is IMG number space hyphen hyphen IMG SRC, SRC space hyphen hyphen IMG description space hyphen hyphen uh, IMG tags. It's a cute dog, right? So then we go back, we take a look at the code, and then we are going to break. So we break to the next line. Again, when you're dealing with HTML, always make sure you use your breaks. And then once we break to the next line, that's when we're simply going to embed the image. So then, so we're going to break. IMG SRC, then we put the single quotation mark in here, right? So this, these single quotation marks are then going to put whatever name I put in here within the quotation marks, very important for, for the linking. So if there's any space in the image name itself, uh, by putting the image name within quotation marks, it'll make the computer read the whole thing instead of stopping wherever that white space is. So then we do the double quotation marks. And so those are for this, then we can catenate in. So the IMG SRC, so that's the, that's the folder, the folder location and the image name that's going to be put here. Then we're going to close and then we're going to break and then we're going to break that then gives us this actual embedded image. And so this is what the gallery actually looks like past that. We're then going to go down. And again, uh, all you're going to do here is you're then going to connection close and then you close the PHP. Then uh, past that, we need to go and we need to take a look at the upload form. So basically, when we click on this upload form here, that is then going to take us to this HTML form, uh, basically a lot like what we saw in one of the previous classes. So again, we have HTML, head, head, body. And so then we're going to have a form 
the action is going to go to upload db.php. So upload.db.php, that's, that's the script that this form is going to send the information to. It is going to be a post. The, uh, the type is going to be a multi-part form data. And then all we're going to do is in plain text, we're going to say image you want to upload. We're going to have an input type like we had before of type is file, name is file to upload, ID is file to upload. Then we're going to break. So let's go over and we take a look at the upload. So this is the form that we're going to be dealing with, right? So here is the image you want to upload. And then this is the file, right? So this is the file. So then we're going to simply go down. We're going to break picture description. Input type is text. And then the name is going to be picture description. Then we're going to have a uh, picture tags input type. Again, it's going to be text and that's going to be picture tags. We're then going to have input type is submit. So when you hit the submit button, it will send this information to the upload db.php. We will then close the form. We will close the body and we will close the HTML. If we go over, we take a look at the, uh, the demo here again. So image you want to upload. This is the file. This is the picture description. So this is the text for the picture description, picture tags, text for the picture tags. And then you're going to hit submit. And when you hit submit, that will then send uh, the picture and whatever else information you've given to the, um, to the, the, the script. So when we go and we click on that, then it's going to go to the upload db.php script. And so this is the script that is actually going to add the image and the other information into the database so that it can be read from the gallery db.php. So first thing that we're going to do up here is we're going to simply upload, uh, or we're simply going to open the PHP tag. Uh, then from this, uh, we are going to have all of the information required in order to save uh, the, the values for the file, right? So basically, uh, we're going to have here is we're going to create a variable called tags. And from the post, that variable is then going to have whatever text we put in for pick tags. So whatever text we put in for pick tags goes here. Uh, dollar sign description, post, whatever description we put in, that's going to be the value for description. Then down here, this is uh, everything required in order to actually save the file, the variables required to save the file into the folder. So we're going to create a dollar sign save directory. The save directory is going to be that picks folder. So we take a look here and we look at the folder structure. So what we're going to be saying is this is where the script is. So we want to save the files into the picks folder. Uh, then we're going to create a variable called save file. And this, this is a bit of a mess. Um, I talked about this again in the previous gallery classes, but basically what we're doing here is the uh, dollar sign underscore files, the file uploaded and name, this is going to strip out and basically only give us the base name. So this is going to give us the exact file name of the file that we're going to be uploading. We are then going to concatenate. Basically, we are going to add the save directory to the beginning of that. So basically with this uh, period forward slash picks forward slash. So what this is going to be is period forward slash picks forward slash and then whatever the name of the file is. And all of that is going to be saved to the value of save file. Then what we're going to do is we're going to go down again. We have to deal with the database again. So server name, username, password, we're then going to do the connection. So all that information for connecting to the database from this point here, again, we're going to do that connection. We still have, we have to create the variable uh, for the connection to connect to the database, new MySQL I server name, username, password, and database. We are then going to leave the database for a second. And what we're going to do here is we're actually going to move the file that we're uploading into the folder. So if move, uh, move uploaded file and this file, and you're going to save it. So basically, if you're able to move the file that you're trying to upload into the, the proper place, so what this does is this temp name here, whenever you upload a file using PHP in an HTML form, that file is initially given a temporary name. So literally what we're doing here is we're renaming the file we just uploaded that got a temporary name into the file name that we want. So this save file here is this, right? So if you're able to basically move that into the directory, save the file appropriately, then what we're going to be doing is we're going to echo uh, picture uploaded the file the name was saved 
And then we're going to say uh, the image SRC, so basically the file that was actually saved. So that's what's going to be here. We're going to do the picture description. So the picture description that we sent over from the form. And then we're going to do the picture tags. So basically all of that is simply going to be printed out uh, whenever we upload a file. So if we go here, and again, let's say we choose a file. Um, I don't know, 13. And... Uh, uh, this is for the class and this uh, class demo something, right? So I'm going to put all that in there. Uh, then I hit submit. So basically what we're going to have here is picture was uploaded. So that's the H1. Uh, this is the file that was actually uploaded. This is the picture itself to show us what the picture was. We get the picture description. This is for class, picture tags, you know, class demo something. And then this says database work. Basically, this printed out that the database worked for us. Uh, let's go down here. Uh, then we're going to do uh, else. So basically, if the file did not get uploaded, then we're going to say echo uploaded did not work. Um, and then I'm going to have a link to go back. And then what we're going to do down here is we're going to have the connection to the database. So this is where we're actually going to be inserting the, the information that we have in the HTML form to the database. So if connection error, so basically if there's a connection error, then simply print out the connection failed and what the connection error is. Then what we're going to do is we're going to create our SQL statement. So with this SQL statement, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be inserting Right? So with the gallery DB, when we have the SQL statement, we're going to be selecting. Here, we're going to be inserting. So we're going to insert into pictures, and then we say what the column names are. Pick name, pick description, pick tags. And so the values are going to be save file. Right, So this is that full file path that we created up at the top. So the save file, that's what's going to go into the database. Then you're going to have... The description so whatever the description was that's going to go into the database and then the tags right so the save file is going to go to pick name description is going to go to pick description and tags is going to go to pick tags if and we're going to do the connection query sql equals true so basically if this works it'll simply say uh, print out database worked so that's where when we're looking at the demonstration you see this right here where it says database worked? That's getting printed out because it actually got put into the database itself. Else, there's going to be an error. Then finally at the bottom, we have that diagnostic uh, information that I had before. Again, diagnostic info, the temporary file name, what that is, the uh, save file variable value, what that is, just to make sure that there's not a mistake there. We didn't fat finger something. So this is diagnostic info down here. Again, this can, this can and should be removed when you have the finished product. Um, we are then going to close uh, the PHP tag, and then we are simply going to have that link to go back to the gallery. So again, there should never be a dead end in your application. So this is where you can go back to the gallery page. And again, when we take a look at the demonstration, you click on that, and now we are back to the gallery. And so that is uh, the way that this uh, particular application works. Um, and again, now, now you're starting to learn not simply how to save files into folders on your web server, but then actually store information about the files that you're saving into a MySQL database so that in the future we can start doing things like search and all that kind of stuff. So again, like uh, if we go here, um, so again, we have a uh, two, we have two records here that have dog in it. So what we can do is we can do is select all, uh, from pictures where pick tags like, uh, and if you don't understand this, <laughs> it's okay. Again, I did a, I did a whole bunch of classes on my SQL before. So take a look at those classes. So basically what this is saying is select all, it's set, select all, um, rows from pictures where pick tags is basically like dog. So where, where the word dog, uh, is, is in, in the tags for any record show just those records.
words. So if we do that, again, we do the uh, semicolon here and we hit enter. And so now we can see that only the two records with dog in their tags show up. And so it will show you in, pre in the next classes is then how you can actually create a little search form within your application to do searches based off of these types of tags. So this is an overview of how it is. Again, if you don't fully understand everything, just, just take a look at the code, slowly go through the code, figure it out. I swear to you, it's not that complicated uh, once you start breaking everything down. So there you go. Now you know how to create a gallery using a MySQL database. Again, right now, uh, you may not fully understand the power of this, but I swear as we go, when we do future demonstrations, you'll understand why this is so significant. Again, with this, it is very easy to start adding additional information about these images. And then what you'll be able to do is in the future, you'll be able to use a PHP script to then be able to do things such as print out images based off of things like certain tags. You'll then be able to sort images based off of what their timestamp is. Again, you'll be able to create different feeds. When you think about uh, being able to show images based off of something like tags or records, uh, one of the things you'll be able to do is you'll be able to create have different user accounts. So it'll show what user account uploaded an image, and then you can have feeds that will show you just the images uh, that a particular user account uploaded. And then you can start getting a little bit more sophisticated where you can say, based off of the images, is that this account uploaded and these tags that I'm looking for what shows up right now that you have that that MySQL database backend you can actually start interacting with the images in ways that you can't uh, when simply all you're doing is printing out whatever whatever images happen to be in a particular folder uh, so this will get uh, very interesting going forward uh, now one of the things again if you're gonna be looking at my code especially some of the old-timers oh the old-timers oh the old-timers there may be a question of Eli why did you do however I did something Again, one of the things you have to be thinking, especially as you start creating a little bit more complicated code, is there's there's nine ways to skin a cat. There's nine ways to accomplish almost anything in technology. And so one of the things is when I'm showing you folks how to do stuff, I pick a specific way. I'm not telling you it's the right way. I'm not telling you it's the best way. Based off of how I am trying to teach, I create these classes in a specific way. Is this what I would put it, put into a production environment? Almost certainly not, almost certainly not. But again, when you're trying to teach subjects, when you're trying to build on previous classes, you have to do things that, that may not work the best in the real world. So again, everything that I show you, what I want you to understand, I want you to understand the concepts that I'm showing you. I want you to understand why more or less we're going about things the way that we're going about it. And then what I want you to do is then design for yourself a better way of doing it. Is, is what I'm showing you the best way? Probably not. So once you've learned it, okay, figure out a better way. Uh, you will notice in the demonstrations going forward, I will be using uh, an IDE or a code editor called VS Code. Uh, again, I like using at basic ASCII editors when I'm teaching uh, new people how to write simple code because then I don't have to worry about you trying to figure out how to use a new piece of software, right? If, if you can't figure out how to use text edit, if you can't figure out how to use and, and save a file with a different extension with text edit, you don't need to be here. <laughs> It's like, you know, at this point, right? So I feel like when I'm showing you a basic text editor, everybody can follow along. One of the issues is once you start using VS Code or you start using other IDEs, there, there's a bit of a learning curve with that product. So there's the learning curve of understanding how the code works. And then there's a learning curve of understanding the product you're using to write the code. At this point, our apps are starting to get big and complicated enough that trying to do it on an ASCII editor is just a pain in the butt. Like literally, I was actually doing a demonstration. I do these little live shows. So when I'm, when I'm coming up with these demonstrations, I do a live show and I'll sit there and I'll type stuff out and you know, I'll figure out how I want things to look. Literally, I was doing a live show and I was, ta I was talking to the viewers the whole nine yards and I, I got stuck for something like 30 minutes. I got stuck for 30 minutes because I forgot a period. And that whole connection fail. So with the whole thing where the uh, you try to connect the database, and if the if the you don't have a connection, it fails out, right? I forgot to put a period. So when it says connection error, uh, you know colon, and then it's supposed to give what the connection error is. Uh, between those two, I forgot to put a period. I literally just forgot to put a period, and uh, yeah, that took me half an hour to figure out what I had done wrong. <laughs> 
<laughs> so once we start getting to a little bit more complicated code, um, you know, you, you don't want to be trying to figure out, you know, what period you forgot and whatever else. So that's why we're now using VS Code and we'll be using VS Code in most of the projects going, going into the future. Do realize though, you can copy and paste the code that I gave you into text edit or into notepad, simply save it to .php or .html and it will work, but we will be using VS Code going, going forward just because it's, it's easier for those stupid little it's like seriously, I forgot a period. That was a, I was sitting there, and really, I th I thought I just screwed up. I thought I thought there was like, I was like, oh, what am I, what am I forgetting? And I'm looking through all the, I'm like, what did I forget? Period, <laughs> one period for the error. The hilarious part was for the hilarious part was it's actually the error code. I screwed up the error code code <laughs> coding. <laughs> So that's why we're using VS Code. So, anyways, with that, again, uh, all the uh, all the script, everything is down below in the description. So again, take a look at that, put that onto your server, try to try to figure out what's going on. At first, it may seem a little bit complicated, uh, but once you understand, you know what's happening, it'll get a lot easier. The other thing too, again, at at this at this level, showing you these demonstrations, you do you do need a pretty good knowledge of MySQL. You do need to feel comfortable uh, as a Linux administrator for a LAMP server. You do need to be pretty comfortable with PHP, so on and so forth. Again, if you're a complete noob and you're simply copying and pasting this code. Maybe it'll work for you, but I mean, you got to understand file and folder permissions. You got to understand how to set up the MySQL database. You have to understand some of those things um, or it's going to be difficult for you. So anyways, anyways, with that, as always, I enjoy teaching this class and look forward to seeing you at the next one. If you like the content that I create, please think about going to elinethecomputerguy.com and becoming a member or donating. Please understand that all the educational videos are in front of the paywall. That includes the videos, that includes the notes, the diagrams, and the code example. All of that is freely available and in front of the paywall. But if you want to watch opinion videos or if you want to be able to comment, you do need to become a member. Membership is $5 a month or $60 a year and gives you access to those opinion videos and the ability uh, to comment. If you don't want to become a member, you just want to give a one-time uh, donation, there is also a donate button where you can do that. Please understand, in order to provide the education that I am, it does cost money. The servers cost money, equipment costs money, travel costs money. All of these things cost a reasonable amount of money. And the fact of the matter is, is YouTube's advertising program no longer supports creators the way that it used to. So if you want to these classes to continue to stick around and you find them to be valuable, please think about either becoming a monthly member or donating a few dollars for this project.